Good day. Welcome to Education and Safety. I'm Mike. One of the things we're going to do today is part two of our walking stick. This is the one that I started and now I'm going to uh, take you to the next level. But I wanted to share something with you before we get started. Check this out. So what I have here is two different size rubber tips and I've used them for my walking sticks. One of the things that you can do is go and find a rubber tip that's maybe a small, medium and large. These are two that I have that are probably a large one and a small one. I think the medium one that's in between that they were out of. So all I have is these two, but if it was my best interest to have all three so when I'm out looking for dead walking sticks dead tree limbs I'm gonna actually take these and hold them up to the bottom of the stick or where I could cut it so that these would fit perfectly the optimal optimal meaning the best size walking stick is somewhere about an inch to an inch and an eighth diameter at the bottom okay like this and then the next one would be three quarters of an inch. This one here, I think, if I'm correct, is somewhere between a half inch and five eighths. Not sure, but you can check it. Different hardware stores carry these things and you can use these to absolutely have a really soft bottom walking stick. And I'll show you how we're gonna put these on, and if we can use one of these, we'll put one of these on today on one of our walking sticks and the one that I'm working on. Okay, let's get started. These desert plants are extremely dangerous, okay? They are extremely pointy and extremely sharp. You must stay away from them. Always stay away from them. They're very, very sharp. These desert plants are extremely sharp. You must stay away from them. So what we're looking for is we're gonna look for a curved piece of wood that I can make a bow and sort of like how you make a fire. Um, so what we're going to be looking for is a piece of wood that's curved that I can put a string onto it and then use that as a bow to not start a fire with the upright stick, but to potentially drill a hole in the handle of this stick. Uh, I'll show you how we're going to possibly do that. If it's successful, you'll see the video. If not, then we're just going to keep on moving on to some other things but I'll leave the footage in and the filming. All right, let's find some bows and some sticks. This might work. Let's take a look. Uh, that could be my upright stick right there. And My bow could be right over here. Let's see if this will work. Right here. You gotta watch out. Everything has thorns on in the desert. Everything. That's not, that's not good. 
because it's too dry. Now I'll need one more thing I'll need is a stick to put on the top of the long stick that's going to spin. We might be able to use this little fork right there. So that might work too. So we'll save that. And let's see if I can find a bow. I'm just looking here. Everything looks pretty. There might be some things up here. No, I think we're good. I think maybe this stick might work. Let's see. This one right here. That's got a curve to it. So we might be able to utilize this one here. I'm going to pull it out. And watch away from these thorns right here. I'll get poked right there. This might work. Tie a string there. I don't know. I think it's too. It's 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 usable. It's usable. But I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna pass. I think I'm going to pass on this, but let's just see here. Uh, that might work. That might work. We'll take it along. Here's a pile of twigs here. Let's see here. Let's see what this is. This is, this is something that could be used. We could put like a little hole there and that could be to hold the spindle in the top. That might work out really good. So I'm gonna keep that one and I'm gonna trade it in for this one here. So I'm gonna take that one away and I'm gonna trade it in for that one. There we go. All right, so what we're doing is we're just gonna set some stuff down here and uh, we're gonna get this out. Okay, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take this and this. I'm gonna get my saw, saw out and we're gonna start to Saw a few pieces and get started. All right, so we're going to use we're going to use this one here. I think if everything works out, we're going to use this one as the spindle or the drill. That's going to be used as the spindle or the drill. This piece we're going to get a little hole in it and use that to hold the top of the spindle. And then here, on one of these, probably on this side here, I'll probably end up making a slice and putting a piece of metal in there to act as a drill bit. And then I'll cut this right about here with a saw. So I'll have my spindle and make a point here on the top. And then a point on that piece right here. Probably, uh, I'll probably put it like right here, I'll probably put it right there because I'm going to hold it uh, with this left hand on the top and I'm going to pull my bow back and forth and the spindle, will be, the spindle will go from the top here down to the ground into the handle right there, just like that, okay? And then I'll use my bow to pull back and forth to, to, to drill the hole in the handle right there to go through it. All right, so I'm going through all of my gear here to set everything up, and I just looked for it. Oh, 
I just found it, believe it or not. But anyway, I found something I want to share with you. This is a um, this is a spindle that I made to start a fire. This goes in the top, and it gets held by a piece of wood. And this down here is what spins and starts a fire, and creates a, like a little smoke and amber that glows. And then from that, you start your fire. But anyway, I used this a few times um, to start a fire, and was unsuccessful with it just because of the type of wood and it was damp and so forth so still to this day i still want to try to get a fire started with this piece but anyway i'm going to set this to a side for another day and we'll show you that and what i wanted to show you was this right here so you say well what is this this is a piece of metal it's got a little point at the end and believe it or not, it's got a little bit of a curve, and this piece of metal was found in the street from a street sweeper. What I'm going to try to attempt is to take this piece of metal, embed it into the spindle of the upright piece, and make a drill out of it to drill through the piece of wood that's on the handle, which is that handle down there, the, the walking stick that I'm working on. And we're going to get started, and here we go. All right, our sun's going down quick, so we got our bow, which is this one. We got our spindle, which we're going to carve out of that. I already saw two lines in the back of that, and and a line in the top of that where the the um, a line a, a little. I saw the little groove in there, and I saw the groove in here for the cord to go through, and that's going to be my bow, right there. And then this is now I'm going to get a little hole. For the spindle and then I'm gonna make a point down here that will um, go into this piece of wood here and then on the top that's where I'm going to um, put the uh, drill bit or the the, the piece of uh, steel from the uh, where is it here I'm trying to find it here it is this piece of steel is going to get embedded into here just like that right there okay that's what i'm going to do and after i get this embedded in here okay uh, i'll probably end up taking a little piece off of this then i'll wrap a quarter around this to make this tight so that it doesn't fall out when i actually use it as a drill okay so we have the bow, we have this little piece of wood that I put a hole in that I'll be holding that on the top of the spindle, which this is the top of the spindle right here. Okay, right here is the spindle. Let me show you that. That is the spindle and I cut a groove and the bottom, I'm gonna put the piece of metal, put the piece of metal inside and then put a little wedge in there and then wrap some cord around it and see how it works. All right, so let's show you where we're at. We made the handle to hold the stick right here, okay? We made a groove and so forth, and that's gonna hopefully be able to handle the situation to hold the bit, and then we made the string onto the bow. So let's check it out and see if it works. <laughs> Let me show you what we got so far. Our stick this goes here on top we hold it and then this spins just like so and then we have our bow which is here now I probably have to adjust the string so that it works perfectly and The, the premise is that when I go back and forth like this, this is going to spin. Let me show you here. Hang on here for a second. Let me readjust this. Okay, so we got the bowstring taunt. Let's see here. Let's just see what it feels like.
we're going to continue on that aspect of it. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you something real special. I'm going to take this piece of uh, the walking stick that I've been working on and I'm going to sand this down a little bit at the tip and I'm going to put the rubber tip on it and let that glue dry so that's completed and that'll be finished and then I can work on the next thing and I wanted to show you something else too. Here we go. Alright so I'm going to use a 60 grit sandpaper. I have 60 grit right here. That's the green stuff right here. Just like so. Or I can use this 60 grit wheel sandpaper and all I'm going to do is sand the tip right here and prepare it for the rubber tip which is this piece right here and I'm also going to use a copper penny inside the rubber tip so that the rubber tip is more evenly pressured from the uh, end of the, the this this walking stick right here. Okay, so I'm going to sand this up a little bit. All right, so I got the uh, tip sanded. I'm not going to sand the whole walking stick tonight. And uh, what I'm going to do is see and test the rubber tip. Let's just test this and see if it goes on, right like this. Yeah, it goes on great. So now we're gonna take that off. Okay, we got it all put on. I put the penny inside and I put the um, glue on the bottom and then I put glue all the way up to the edge. So when I press down, it squeezed out and then I just left it go around. So I'll leave that dry up like that, just like that. And that should turn out really good. Now back to the, the the other part of it. So that'll that'll dry in 48 hours. The drilling this hole in here in here. Now you know you could take, for instance, a screwdriver if you wanted to, and uh, take a file on a screwdriver flat head screwdriver like this. Okay, and you can actually file it and make a sharp edge and also make it so that one side has a little bit of a curve to it and then you can just go in there and twist it so what you could do is you could take a screwdriver like this and then file it so that the tip right here that tip is angled and it's also beveled on one side and then you could put it into the hole right here and just twist it until you get a hole. Now I'm just going to try to do it and turn the filming off and see how much of a hole I can get just by using a regular screwdriver. Okay, so one of the things I recommend you using is a rubber glove so that when you use a screwdriver, and I did show you here a little bit, I got a hole, you can check it out. So I got a little bit of a hole. So if I took it, this screwdriver and filed it at a beveled edge so that one side had a tip, you know, so it would be angled, okay, sort of like if I, if, you, if I cut it off sort of like that in line with the back of the stick and chiseled it off and then filed one side so it was like razor sharp, so it was beveled, so that when I would turn it, it would actually dig in and twist and take out the... Uh, the piece and I get to halfway through and then start on the other side and what I did was I measured this way just like this and I measured on this side over here and the other hole should be right there and it is right there there it is so that's what I did so I took my finger I measured it just like that I held it just like there and then I went over here there and I eyed it up and that should be good so let me just tell you where we're at on this walking stick. We have a walking stick that has some nubs on. I am going to take my knife, which I brought the better knife today that has more momentum, and I'm going to knock the nubs off, okay? So any of these nubs, I'm going to knock off and get those cleared off. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this walking stick so that it's smoother 
because there's a lot of cuts and so forth on it. So I've got about half an hour of time I'm going to put onto it. And uh, before I do that, I'm going to pack everything up that I have here. All of this gear is going to be all packed up first. And the only thing I'm going to have is the sandpaper. And I have a rock already right there ready to go. Okay. And that'll be it. The other thing I was going to do, if I could have got the whole done tonight, I was going to actually use some leather cord and make a extremely neat uh, different uh, cord grip for this. One of the things I'm going to do too, I wanted to share this with you. Oh, so what I did was I took this this um, piece of metal and it was going in. Where is it? Here it is. So it was going into this. Let me show you. I drilled and saw the hole. I saw the hole, but the other side I didn't saw, and I only saw on one side. And then I also made a groove where I bent it. Now I could bend this and break this off if I wanted to right here and or if I wanted to I could bend it coming down and then tie it around the stick somewhere where my finger is right about here okay and then I was taking pieces of small little pieces of wood and putting it in here as a like a like a wedge and then from that point I was going to tie a um, cord around so that now when I press down, it's not going to go downwards because it's hitting right here. Okay. And then this would just spin and this would automatically just drill right through. If this was spinning freely, that would just drill right through that and make a perfect hole. Now that would be a small hole. If I wanted to make it bigger, then what I could do is I could get you know, a screwdriver, a regular screwdriver, and just go right through it. I wouldn't even have to file anything down if I wanted to do that. Or find another piece of metal that's a little bit bigger than this size, you know, like a quarter inch, which is quarter inch, quarter inch to three eighths is probably the best to put into that particular uh, walking stick so you can get the cord through easy. Now we're out here in Red Rock, Las Vegas, Nevada, and the mountains out here are tremendously uh, all made out of sandstone and when the sun goes down today is January 16th 2024 what's a, what's a, interesting though is this this is what's interesting is we had a I, I would say maybe a 55 degree day Fahrenheit day so right now it's getting a little cloudy but not much the sun's going down temperatures are going to drop because all the winds blowing from Mount Charleston 12,924 feet the air comes off that mountain down into this valley and it gets super cold super fast so in no time you can have a 40 degree drop right where I'm standing so right now I would say it's probably 50 degrees with no wind it's really nice out but it's gonna change really really fast so we're gonna get wrapped up here get everything put away and the only thing I'm gonna be gonna be doing is sanding so that I can just hike out of here and be on my way All right, so I got everything all packed up here the only thing that I wanted to show you was a walking stick that I made. This one, um, I used a rubber tip and a coin in the bottom and I stained it and then polyurethaned it. And one of the things I did was I used a leather strap right here. You don't need a leather strap, but if you use your regular hands against it, it's fine. Okay. Um, the, this strap though, isn't drilled through, so it'll slide a little bit. Okay. It'll move up and down a little bit. If I drill a hole, then I can put the strap through and then it'll be more solid and it won't slip around. And if I wanted to do some other kind of cording on it, I could. So this one's pretty much done. This was a dried walking stick. The one I'm working on is a wet one. So I'm going to continue sanding it and then we're going to get out of here in about, uh, like I said, 25 minutes. Thanks for joining me today here on education and safety. I'm Mike. Always be safe. Always do everything that you're doing in a safe area and always take precautions and always be prepared for anything from a cut, from a fall, from a thorn. Have everything. Have a tweezers, have some antiseptic, have something to clean a wound so that you're always, always ready and prepared. Have a knife uh, or knives. Usually I have knives and uh, that's the most important thing. So I'm just going to wrap this up tonight and uh, thanks for sharing. Uh, 
my uh, information with anybody if uh, you want to that's fine I appreciate it I also do a little hiking I also do some uh, bushcraft bushcraft could be anything from crafting something to making something to survival and I also do some survival stuff uh, it doesn't matter if it's out and about in the wilderness or if it's just wherever you're surviving all the time I'll just make your journeys and adventures the best they can for you guys and uh, and uh, make sure that you just take precaution and you know two three four people in a team is better than one person by themselves so that's all i can tell you and when you're out in the wilderness really map out where you're going to go and also make sure that you are aware of what types of things are out and about where you're at okay mountain lions foxes coyotes summertime there's all kinds of snakes behind me potentially um coming out they're in hibernation right now if they come out well then i gotta be prepared but at the same time too it's really cold so pretty much i think they're they're in and uh, they're sleeping chipmunks and ground ground squirrels chipmunks and ground squirrels they're all over the place but most of them go to where the water is and that's in that direction there's a spring and in that direction there's a spring and in the back in that direction there's a spring so there's a few springs that keep water on the ground and surface all year round even in the winter time that they can drink and that's where most of them are if you hang out in those areas and you just sit there they're going to be coming around and you'll see them all all right so little ground squirrels sometimes you see some road runners sometimes you see some foxes going through if you're quiet and they'll just walk right by they won't bother you you know i did see coyotes out here before and also there's mountain lions so you got to be super careful all right Uh, so I wanted to uh, just show you what I did. So I sanded it down a little bit and uh, Yeah, and you and in uh, part one I carved the name uh, initial and the date and uh, When I just touch this wood, it's just damp So you, you just you can't do anything with it right now, but I sanded it down a little bit I put a tip on it So if I want to use it once I drill a hole and put a leather stick in it, I can just use it, you know, and just Make sure I always keep wax on top here so it doesn't crack. Uh, it'll minimize the cracking and it'll dry slower. And uh, it's heavy for sure with all the moisture in it. So it's there's a ton of moisture in it. You can just feel it. So the other thing too is we're just gonna uh, wrap things up tonight and now we're headed out. Okay. There's a couple little pieces that are going to just fall off. I, I missed. You can just pull them right off. But pretty much everything's sanded. And I also took the uh, large knife and knocked off all the, the nubs. And so it's pretty much pretty much good to go now. I just got to let it dry out. And uh, that should do it. So this will be part two. Part, uh, I guess part three, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to drill this hole and finally finalize that with the leather um, grip on it. And maybe there's even a chance, I'm thinking about maybe staining this, okay? Even before it's dry, stain it and uh, really super light stain it and let it absorb into it while it's drying and see what happens, Let's do a little experiment. All right, maybe not. I know I can't polyurethane until it's 100% dry and, uh, or not 100%, there's a certain percentage you have to research that yourself what percentage the wood moisture content must be prior to really doing good proper staining and then good proper polyurethaning so that's some research uh, you can do and just uh, check it out see what it says